Hi guys and welcome to the first episode of Tips and Tricks which will be uh, in between the fly time videos and we will go more into detail uh, on for example how to choose the right hair for different situations and different flies different hackles and so on so it's a lot of fly time tips and tricks uh, not only uh, but more detail than we do in the fly time videos per se so for example today we're going to talk about how it's important to choose uh, a different type of hair for a fly like this like a huge sunray shadow uh, and a small small tube fly for uh, in this size because there is a big difference how the fly will behave and uh, how it will fish depending on what we choose so for example uh, if we start off with fox hair which is the most uh, most used uh, hair material for modern type of uh, tube flies especially here in Scandinavia and Northern Europe this is what we normally use and if you look at a tail uh, which I'm gonna get one second uh, I forgot that I have a tail that I will show you so let's see uh, excuse the mess we're still moving into the new house uh, but if you look at a tail like this you have uh, the back part and the stomach part and the, the back of the tail has that shorter a little bit stiffer uh, stiffer hair which a lot of uh, a lot of tube flyer tires don't, doesn't feel is the, the best hair or good quality of hair depends on how you use it and what you're going to use it for so a lot of us including myself we want to use that soft hair which is on this side of the tail but depending on what fly I'm going to tie this can also be a bad choice so there is a few situations where this hair is a much better choice of uh, wing material so for example we start off with we're mo mostly talking about salmon flies here or flies for swinging fishing like swinging fly tube flies and so on but you can also of course use fox hair for woolly buggers which is a very comfortable way to get a very nice tail different patterns you can use that in different variations of course and to use for example hairs for that in a c most convenient way is of course to use that shorter hair here and as you can see this fox piece is not cut traditionally uh, like a circle it's cut long so you will get some of that shorter uh, back hair and that softer hair here so for example to just show you that woolly bugger for example how to use that hair you just take a little piece out and as you can see that tail is more or less ready you don't have to do anything you just tie it on and you're good to go and this is also a very good choice if you want to have a little bit stiffer underwing if you're tying a larger fly you do not want to have just this super soft hairs because this if you keep building a long fly like this sunray with just materials like that it has a big chance that these fibers will just tangle into your hook uh, and if you're fishing uh, rivers with very rapid water or strong currents it will also collapse a little bit uh, especially if you're tying quite simple flies like just a few uh, hackle or so and a wing you want to choose the right materials so the fly behaves the way that you wish for but except for using it as tails and butts in, in streamers of course this is as I said a very good material for shorter wings shorter under under wings and then you gradually go on to choose this so for example if you take this piece it's a very nice piece of fox hair here super soft hair but if I just take this which is a very nice wing here but if I just use it like this this will very easily get tangled in your hook especially if you're using this full length of very very soft hair unless you're doing something to support that wing by for example using stiffer hair underneath so what some person 
might feel is, I, I don't want, I like that hair, it's bad material, someone else will love. Depends on what type of fly you're gonna fish with and what kind of rivers. Rivers with slower water or not as fast currents, of course, you can use flies that has a little bit more softer hairs. But if you're fishing a typical Scandinavian northern uh, river, like in Norway or in north of Sweden with pretty hard current and rapid waters, you would need something to support that fly or that wing. So in front of me I have a lot of different materials and we talked a little bit about a fox, we'll get back to that when we start mixing hairs. Because another very good choice instead of using or if you don't have that stiffer fox hair or if you need something that has even more support and less volume or you want to use something with less volume, creating a very slim wing bucktail is a very very good option and as you can see with just a few strands here you don't even have to take a lot of hairs you will have a lot of stability a lot of structure and still have a fly that has good uh, visibility in a way or you will have a lot of light going through this wing the same structure in a softer hair material you will need to add to it to get that uh, to be holding the same structure but it will also be very thick so I personally believe that uh, less is more when it comes to a salmon fly for many reasons we are talking a lot of times that you want to hide the fly in the surrounding and the, the, the fly should just come out of nowhere and if your fly is very thick and very dense and has a lot of materials first of all it swims uh, not as good it doesn't swim as good uh, a very slim wing will always move a little bit better and if you have a very slim wing you also need something that supports that so it doesn't just collapse which is the purpose of using different types of hairs to create what that so for example bucktail is a sheep and very very good option for that something that is a little bit uh, frequently used is something called polar bear it has a very similar structure as you can see just a few strands will create a good shape and very good stability but it also has a certain shimmer to it you can see it has almost like it's naturally flashed but as some of you know or uh, it is a little bit questionable material I prefer most cases to use bucktail actually and if you want to have a little bit flash in it, in uh, or that, that flashy effect, you can just brush a little bit of dubbing into that wing and you will more or less get the same effect. So bucktail is a very good choice. And I will show you here, there's two flies I've tied, they're identical, with one exception. But this one, I'm going to put that on a needle. This one is tied with uh, polar bear underneath. creates a very good shape and this is a very slim fly but that polar bear will keep uh, that shape the fly will keep its shape in even pretty fast waters due to that stiffer underwing but this is tied with bucktail instead and you as you can see in just a few seconds it has more or less exactly the same shape it is a little bit see-through and it will not lose its uh, form in, in fa fast waters. So as you can see bucktail will more or less give you the same result as polar bear uh, but it's less questionable and way way cheaper. So bucktail is a very personal favorite of mine because I like these type of flies. I'm very simple when it comes to tying flies. I like it to be uh, fast efficient uh, and durable which these kind of flies are but then you need to choose the right material. If I would do the same with just this super soft hair, then I would need uh, body hackle. I would need perhaps two set of front hackles, several wings just to create support. But if you're just doing a wing a hackle and a wing, you will have to choose the materials for it. Uh, we can take a very classic, I haven't even fished this. This is original Ray Brooks. Uh, Sunray Shadow. This is uh, 
squirrel in the end air or in the underwing. He also had a model with uh, white bucktail. And it's a uh, black bear or monkey, Columbus monkey uh, in top, which is a very stiff, quite stiff material. But to this length of a fly, this will swim equally nice in the water as this tiny one does, which is made with just with fox hair. So, for example, for a small fly, you can choose softer materials and it will keep its shape. A longer one will then need a little bit stiffer hair to create the same. So this one, the typical sunray will be done with, for example, a little bit of bucktail or polar bear if you prefer that. And then you can just take a little bit of black fox if you want to have a little bit more volume. Otherwise, a wing with goat hair, for example. As you can see, that bucktail here, it, hold, it supports the wing. And I haven't even tied the fly. But you can see that this doesn't fall due to this. So this is a way better option than putting white fox hair in the bottom because that is very soft and that will make that fall. So it is very important to choose the, the right material for the right fly. And for example like this kind of flies is just a simple hackle polar bear and then goat. A fly in this size needs stiffer materials than the small ones. Uh, Here's another one of those monkey style, I showed you the bucktail and the polar bear, but this one is actually tied with fox hair. But as you can see, it also has that same support, because I was choosing fox hair that is a little bit stiffer. But it all also is a little bit more volume in it, as you can see. It is not as slim or see-through, due to the fact that it's a different material. So it dep everything depends on... What kind of flies do you like? What style of fly? Uh, there's no wing material that's bad. It might not suit your uh, requirements, but it doesn't mean that it's a bad material. So choosing the right and experimenting with different... And this is also a very good way to experiment with colors. If you have all these pieces of hairs in front of you and you have no idea what to tie, just throw them together and say, oh, this might look good. Or uh, what happens with these? Uh, okay, or... Then you can create something fun out of that. Uh, here's another one that's tied with, as you can see, very soft fox hair on top and bucktail underneath. So this fly, as you can see, is very see-through, very lightly dressed, but it's still a pretty big fly. And this, in a bright day, in a bright sunny day, in, in a clear water river or something that has that little bit yellow tone, it will really hide in its surroundings and then just when it comes in front of the salmon it's a big fly. So that's a little bit my thoughts and ideas about choosing uh, hairs depending on fly uh, and situation. Stiffer hairs, larger flies, uh, stiffer hairs, more rapid waters, uh, soft hair of course for big flies. If you have a little bit of support, for example, we will show this again with fox hair. You can see it, this one, I will make it a, a little bit thinner. You can see this just falls down. It's so soft. But if I put a little bit of polar bear or bucktail underneath, this is not... Let's see, this one is more suitable in length. But as you can see, it rests on it. It doesn't fall. So different materials stiffer slowly gradually going over to softer or just keeping those a little bit stiffer hairs because for example this goat is pretty stiff but due to its length in the end it is quite soft anyway uh, i tie a lot of flies with fox hair a lot of types a lot of flies with bucktail as well everything depends on what i want to fish big flies small flies uh, discreet, a lot of volume, and so on. Uh, and I'm pretty satisfied with that. And if you feel that there's something that you're uh, that I'm missing or something, please leave a comment. Uh, I will, of course, try to explain it more or do another video if I'm missing out on something. 
These materials is what I normally use for my salmon flies. It's bucktail, polar bear or fox and of course goat for those big sun rays. And I'm mixing it up uh, and uh, so should you. Try experiment a little bit, see what you like. Go out, throw them in the river and see how it behaves. But in general you can say larger flies will tangle more if you just use softer hairs. And if you want to create a small fly that should move a lot, then you shouldn't just choose the stiffer hairs. So it's a balance all the time to create what you will, what you personally would think is the perfect fly. Uh, well, that's it. I hope uh, I helped a little bit. And uh, within a week, uh, there will be a new episode of uh, fly tying, and we're going to tie red butt both on hook and the tube fly. So hopefully I will see you soon again.